It's been known by radiologists and other physicians for a long time that a common place where traumatic injury to the brain occurs is not deep inside, but is pretty close to the surface. In fact, it's a few millimeters below the surface of the brain where the outer layer of your brain that we call the gray matter meets up with the deeper part of the brain called the white matter. And because gray matter and white matter have a different composition, when they're subjected to a force, such as an impact to the head, the speed at which those tissues move differs, which means that the two tissues slide past each other to a very minor degree, and that creates a force that we call a shear force at that interface. That makes the interface between the gray matter and the white matter susceptible to injury. The white line, which is the gray matter, and all the darker stuff is the white matter. In this study, we've specifically focused on trying to understand whether the interface between gray matter and white matter is altered. And we've done that by looking at the diffusion tensor imaging measure, which is different in the gray and the white matter. And therefore, in healthy people, there's a very sharp transition in what the organization of the brain tissue looks like. In this study, we measured how sharp that transition is from gray matter to white matter and found that in proportion to heading, that transition becomes blurred. We took this analysis a step further to try and understand the meaning of that measurement of the gray matter, white matter interface. And specifically, is it important for the types of changes in brain function, specifically memory function, that we've already reported are associated with changes in the brain's white matter at other locations. And this approach was able to show us that when we look at the number of head impacts on the one hand and memory function on the other hand, which are associated with each other, we were able to show statistically that this gray matter, white matter interface measure explains that relationship. So it gives us increased confidence that this measure is not simply something that's related to heading, but it's something that explains the mechanism going on between heading the soccer ball to excess and changes in memory function, making it potentially more clinically significant.